and through lack of experience, he just lost control of the car as he downshifted. Very bad mistake. Lack of experience. Chris Morris agrees that he was changing gear when he lost control, but that's when their stories differ. He claims that he was leaving his parents' home early in the morning to go to work when the accident occurred. So according to him, he was traveling south. Okay, I was coming over the hill right here. Just before the, the three mailboxes, I started shifting from third to fourth. If the RPMs get up there, it'll spin the wheels and cause uh, you to break traction. Uh, that's what I was trying to avoid, but it happened anyway. He, he was traveling north. There's no way he could hit the tree with the right side of his car by going south. Had he been going south, he would have gone off the other side of the road and he would not have hit a tree. If the investigator is right, then the young man is concealing the fact that he'd been out all night and that he was actually returning home in the early morning when the crash occurred. I was pretty heartbroken to lose the car. I'll work on getting another one though. In Britain, this constable from Birmingham is the police force's top crash expert. 65 miles an hour, 70, and slam the brakes. I mean, it doesn't matter how much we steer, we'll still brake in a relatively straight line. Unlike aircraft, most cars don't carry a black box. Instead, the investigator often has to rely upon the marks left upon the road. As distinctive as fingerprints, each one tells a story. And in his search for the correct result, Doyle literally leaves no stone unturned. Here we are at an interesting point in the skid mark, where we've got evidence of characteristic road grinding, which is this line along the skid mark with a stone at the end of it. This road grinding helps us to determine the direction of travel of the vehicle and shows definitely the vehicle was traveling in that direction. Doyle returns to the skid pan every week for his own education. He works closely with another expert, a tire consultant who's called upon in cases all over the world. To Rex Grogan, every tire is unique. For a start, the tire treads are all still made by hand. We're talking about handmade tires. And here's an example of what happens if the manufacturer doesn't get it quite right. What we're looking at here is through the tread, x-raying through the tread. If we look at the distance of the belt edge from this marked center line here, we can see that it's quite a bit wider on that side than it is on this side. Pretty obviously the tire should be symmetrical about that center line. But this guy got it wrong. He just didn't make it properly. And so this tire is trying to pull the vehicle round a corner that isn't there all the time. Very exciting motoring. Birmingham, one September evening. Science is one thing. The real world of car crash detection is much more messy. It's the rush hour, it's getting dark, and they're racing against time to save the victim. 26-year-old Corinne Dowdy and a female friend are trapped in the wreckage of their silver Nissan. The passenger is freed first. She's six months pregnant. The baby's still alive. Corinne Dowdy has a smashed jaw, leg and arm. At the moment, the crews are engaged in using whole matro hydraulic cutting equipment to uh, extricate her. But you have to balance that with the needs of the paramedics. So it's cut talk to the paramedics, let them do a little bit, they'll stabilise her, then we'll cut a bit more until eventually she's free from the wreckage and she can be transported into hospital. We'd like to get it all over and done with a maximum of one hour. It's known as the golden hour. During that time, the patient has a very good chance of survival. Most times, it's done very much quicker. We've given her um, some pain-killing drugs in order to help the extrication process and um, she should be released within the, within the next 15 to 20 minutes and should be taken to the major injuries unit at the trauma unit at Selly Oak. Um, her condition at the moment is quite poorly but she is stable. 
The question no one can yet answer is what caused Colin to smash head-on into another car in daylight on a straight suburban road. Mike Doyle has arrived at the scene. For him, it's a race against time too. The evidence is disappearing before his eyes. His examination eventually reveals that a third vehicle may have been involved. Witnesses confirm this. It seems to me the major majority of the debris is just there anyway. There's a good yeah. debris scatter. Yeah. It's a data collection process. That information is brought into this office and then we will produce a plan. Red paint. Yeah, you've got gouges in. Yeah. You see this at the end? Yeah. Shows movement that way. Yeah. So we know that these marks have been caused by movement in this direction. Yeah. I've input the information from the accident scene and now on the screen we can see the marks which we saw at the scene. If you take a look at this mark, we can see striations across it where the wheel's actually been rotating. Now we can see that that's the position with the cursor moving around it of the silver vehicle. And that's the position with the cursor moving around it of the red vehicle. So I know that this mark, this curved mark, has been left by a rotating wheel. The mark that we looked at a little while ago was left by a locked skidding wheel. <coughs> so this. What we've got evidence on this tyre is uh, a set of marks scuffing across the tyre, showing that it's been dragged or moved sideways. You can possibly see there's also quite a deep tear in the tyre, right across, which is directly in line with the damage to the rim. We're now going to bring the rest of the image onto the screen. Now we can see the relationship between the road markings, the scuff marks and skid marks left by the vehicles, and the position of the vehicles. The point of impact was around here. The silver vehicle rotated off. The red vehicle was dragged and drawn across in this direction. What isn't shown on this is the third vehicle that we believe was involved. That didn't even stop. And that looks to have been the prime cause of this accident. Here we have the final animation of the scene that we visited with the red car and the silver car traveling towards each other. We can see what happens to the vehicles in the collision. So there we have our final rendered image. Kareen Dowdy, her friend, and the baby all survived this accident. The mysterious third car has never been traced. When you, when you go out to these accidents, you, you can't become um, personally involved in immediately. If we weren't impartial and completely professional, we'd miss things. And the important thing is to make sure that we get the correct result at the end. The correct result is in technical terms, no in emotional terms because no, none of these results are correct in that sense. As a society, we seem to accept the potential risk of car crashes because we're in love with our cars. They provide us with mobility, with freedom, with control. They're stylish, they, they reflect who we think we are. And because we think we have control over the motor vehicles, we don't understand that these aren't just accidents that happen randomly. They actually are crashes that have antecedent factors. We're all terrified of a plane crash because someone else is in the driver's seat, not us.